Taking you straight to Davos, Switzerland now, where several Indian honchos and state chief ministers are attending the World Economic Forum Summit. India Today's news director Rahul Kamal caught up with Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Kamal Nath, who took on the Modi government over the Citizenship Amendment Act and the state of the Indian economy. Take a look. Joining us at the World Economic Forum in Davos is longtime Davos veteran, Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh, Mr. Kamal Nath. So welcome. You've been coming to Davos literally for decades now, three decades plus. I want you to look back in time and explain how you see the world perceiving the India story in 2020 vis-a-vis -vis in years gone by. Well, in the past, people looked at India with curiosity. Then there came a time they looked at in anticipation. Then they looked at India as participation. This time, it's subdued. It's subdued, the Indian interest uh, is subdued. People are not uh, very actively engaging with India at this point of time. So amongst all the, the forums which I've attended, I find this to be curiously uh, different from that point of view. You're saying India thandai this time at Davos and that's the irony, yeah. we're in the middle of all this cold and then the attitude towards India seems to be rather uh, Cold. Why do you think that's the case? You've seen what's happened over the past five years. You've been coming here for decades. Why do you think that the interest around India this time at Davos is subdued? Well, I think that um, uh, probably delivery. What was promised, uh, they don't see happening. They still find uh, uh, that ease of business which is proclaimed is not there. They also see that there is now social unrest in India uh, taking place. They see economic numbers which have gone down. They look at the Indian banking system uh, in great difficulty. So when they see all this, obviously they seem to get cold feet about India. So you've had a packed schedule. I saw your calendar minute by minute. You've been meeting the literal movers and shakers of the world economy. In your conversations with them, Chief Minister, what's the kind of feedback, the buzz that you're picking up? Well, in my conversation with them, they are concerned about India. They look at India um, uh, very optimistically, but now it is tempered with pessimism. Uh, they want to know why is the economy in such bad uh, shape? Why is the banking system under collapse? They are looking at what is this social strife all about? Because the students understand. Has that been a part of your conversation? Oh, yes, everybody brought strife. it up. Everybody brought they it up. They know what's happening around They know, they know. They may not know the micro of it, but broadly they know that India is seeing social unrest uh, after a long time. India has not seen this kind of social unrest and this social unrest uh, is a matter of concern to them. So there are two ways of looking at what you're saying, Chief Minister. One is that you're a long-time Davos veteran, you're sharing your perspective on what's happening now. The other is that you're an interested politician representing the opposition party, the Congress, and therefore you're saying this to give the BJP a bad name. I'm not giving BJP a bad name if it's in the press. They have themselves got, got into the press themselves. They have brought themselves into the press, uh, nothing else. And it is because of this that um, the international press has not been very kind with India. You've been speaking to many international journalists as well? I have been speaking. Uh, how have those conversations been going? What are the kind of questions they're asking? Uh, what is their focus? How are they looking at India? Well, they are looking uh, with concern because they looked at India as a, uh, peaceful, as a democracy, is the largest democracy on this planet. They looked at India as a solid democracy. Uh, now they are seeing uh, things which uh, is causing concern to them, this is the social issues which are coming up. You know, the, the one thing I don't understand, Chief Minister, is that at Davos this time, you've got a big Madhya Pradesh pavilion, there's a Telangana pavilion, there's a Karnataka pavilion, and the size of uh, the India pavilion has shrunk by half. So there is no one big India splash. Everybody has their own little uh, jamburis happening and it's not coming together like te Team India really should. Well, that is one way to look at it. But I think that every state also must make its own presentation. Sure. Every state must have its presentation. But as well. part of a larger as, rubric. As, as a part of a larger rubric, it can be one of the methods of doing it. But that's not the only method. But, and I think that every state, like we've got a pavilion. Now, we want to showcase Madhya Pradesh for investment. Madhya Pradesh has been associated, when you talk about Madhya Pradesh, they say, oh, Bhopal, in terms of gas tragedy. They don't associate Madhya Pradesh is the tiger capital of the world. They don't 
uh, associate Madhya Pradesh that this is the most logistically advantage uh, location in India. So these are the things which have to be brought out. How, how has uh, Davos been for you? I want to understand uh, from you with all the associations you've got with global economic world leaders. How much of that investment have you so far been able to take back to We are getting substantial investment. Uh, there's no use getting into numbers because what happens is on the ground. And whatever is that, that MOU signing spree and that announcement spree, I'm not into. I'm into things happening. I'm th into things happening with timelines. And uh, I see there is a general sense of uh, satisfaction uh, from an investment point of view in Madhya Pradesh. But given the fact that you're saying that the overall India story is looking down, does it make it that much tougher for you as the salesman of brand Madhya Pradesh to try and take of investment course. to Madhya Pradesh? Of course it does. But then, in the end of the day, um, I think people realize that in the long term, India will sustain itself. India will succeed despite government. And I mean any government. It could be our government, it could be another government. Uh, this is the beauty about India. India's intellectual ability, India's entrepreneurial ability is uh, perhaps the best in the world. So we are here at Davos, but I want to use this opportunity uh, to talk about a bit of domestic politics because your government sir, has taken a very strong line on Citizenship Amendment Act. Uh, you've gone to the extent of saying that there's no need for it, it will not be implemented in Madhya Pradesh. How do you hope to do that? Because we heard Kapil Sibbal, the former law minister, say that if the law is passed by the uh, centre, the constitution mandates that you implement it. So how can Congress rule state say we won't implement CA? Well, CA, implementing anything which divides society uh, and for which there's no need. What is the need of a citizen's act? That you, Are there millions of refugees coming in? Is there a war going on? What is the desperateness? Why, why was it a priority? I don't understand. So, after uh, they, they can say, it's our government, we want a democratic mandate. We'll do what we it's, want as part of our manifesto. People that's voted it. for it. Yes, people will also ask questions. That what the hell are you doing? And that's what they're asking now. A national register of citizens. You have the Aadhaar card, you have everything. Now you say, I'll have a national register of citizens. And uh, now if I was to ask you, if you want to register yourself as a citizen, uh, Rahul, what religion are you? Please answer that. No, but that's no, a very no, private no, matter. No, no, that, 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 that's the question. That's the question in the uh, register of citizens. And I'll say, you'll say, I'm a Hindu. I'll say, do you have any proof? And you look up in the air. Then I'll say, what's your religion of your father? You'll say, Hindu. I'll say, do you have any proof? They'll say, what's your grandfather? Say, do you have any proof? Do you have his birth certificate? You said, no, I don't have one. Ah, okay. Now no, I don't know what to do. No, but is this not setting up a big clash between the centre and the states? The centre, we saw what Home Minister Amit Shah said, no matter how much you protest, the CA is here, we're not rolling back. Uh, let's be clear. This, bringing such a law, what the government should have done was to have a meeting of all chief ministers. Get their views on this. And there was no meeting of chief ministers held. And I said, so this, I said so earlier, you could have had a meeting of chief ministers and discussed this issue, put it on the table, this is what we plan doing. Obviously the logical question I would have asked was, what's the urgency? What's the need? What's the desperateness? Now if you say, because I'm the government, it's my, my decision. Well, fine. Uh, the Prime Minister speaks a lot of cooperative federalism. Where is he the, speaks uh, a lot of Team India. Do you see that at play or do you think that's missing and only talk? This is only talk. Where is the cooperative? Uh, the cooperative federalism. Uh, where is it? Where is the consultation with the states? Uh, on any subject. Not, none at all. What are you making of the anti-CA protest that we're seeing in different parts of the country? The government and the BJP insisting that this is a Congress-sponsored protest where you're propping up students and members of the Muslim community to give the government a bad name. This is, uh, what else can they say? They can't say that the people are going against us. So they have to say this is Congress inspired. It's not. All the universities, all the colleges um, have started realizing that what kind, how India's um, uh, democracy, the, the, the ethos of India's democracy is based on what? The ethos of India is based on what? Is based on harmony. Now once you're rocking that boat, 
uh, the boat of harmony, you are rocking the e ethos of India. No, so do you see these, because you've seen many protests over the last several decades, do you see these being contained, do you see them fizzle out over a few days or weeks, or do you see it sustained? I think once students are out in the streets, today it is this, tomorrow it will be that, something or the other will keep coming up. Because once this student's unrest comes on the streets, it manifests itself. It's a manifestation, not merely of this, of the NRC or the CAA. It's a manifestation of frustration. Their, their bleak future with a government not addressing it. The government should have addressed the issue of unemployment. The government should have, at this point, had debates in parliament about the banking sector, the collapse of the banking sector. The government should have talked of uh, the economic distress which the country is going through. And all, all indications are that there's economic distress. It's not something I'm saying. Well, apart from the world's biggest leaders and business heads, the World Economic Forum is also a platform for the exchange of ideas in technology. And this time the focus is on deep fakes, which is a modern take on photoshopping that can wreak havoc in political systems if it's used to push a specific agenda. India Today's Rahul Kaval tried to dig deeper into the reality of deep fakes in Davos. Take a look. Um, this acts a little bit like a virtual mirror, right? I could see myself. If I tap on it, you can actually see a blue face that starts tracking my face. So if I do certain expressions, it would just do mine, right? And now I can actually select from this menu uh, the people I want to become. Let's say I want to become you got Lionel Messi there. You got Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio. You've got I have George. I have George Bush. I have Will Smith. Let's just start with Will Smith. So I click on his face it instantly swaps my face with Will Smith's face, right? So I can smile and do all kinds of facial expressions, and he's doing exactly what I'm doing. So here, let me just pick a couple of other people. Let me be DiCaprio. So, so what's the point that you're making? Because the image in front, of course, is just a demonstration Correct. for how this technology can be used. But what are the practical applications and the fear of this technology being misused? Correct. So our company, Pinscreen, is not focused on you know, creating deep fakes. Uh, what we actually do is we want, we're building photorealistic avatars that are accessible to people. So on the way on creating that, um, you know, we develop technologies that actually allows us to use you know, recent advances in AI to actually generate humans using, um, <clears throat> using you know, data that is uh, collected for these specific people. And uh, this specific demo is a, um, you know, as you mentioned, is basically a collaboration uh, with WEF where, you know, we're trying to create awareness about, you know, the dangers of these kind of technologies. Uh, what this technology allows you to do is uh, become someone else. And the fear is that you can create uh, a deep fake which looks like any Indian politician, take Prime Minister Modi, take uh, Rahul Gandhi, take Arvind Kejriwal, or anybody for that matter, and get them to say things they never said. Is that not the real fear? There you go. <laughs> I'm Will Smith now, just for a moment, looking a little funny, but this is just a demonstration application which suggests that you, know, you can actually use this technology, use the artificial intelligence he's talking about to make Will Smith say something he actually never did. Yeah, exactly. And um, this kind of um, technology is already exploited for harmful purposes, right? So deepfakes, which the author is actually anonymous, um, <clears throat> has actually released, you know, an open source software called actually deepfake. Oh, I am Lionel Messi now, just for a moment, the footballer. And uh, the fear is in an era where clips in social media can go viral in a matter of seconds. You can get Lionel Messi or just think of any character there to say something he never said. And uh, before anybody can clarify, before you can explain what really happened, uh, that entire piece of misinformation would go viral, which if it comes, just say hours before a big polling day in a country where elections are due, that can really wreak havoc. Right. <clears throat> uh, it, it has, what's been the one demonstration of deepfake which has caused damage in the real world. Is this still something which is restricted to universities, academic campuses, no, no. tech companies, the WEF, or do you think it's happening in real life as well? No, it's actually happening in real life already. So um, uh, deepfakes kind of technology is already spreading on the internet uh, since uh, you know more than two years. And um, there's a uh, cybersecurity company that actually made some analysis and they found out that 
96% of all the defects are, you know, related to porn. There were, you know, as of July 2019, there were 134 million views of celebrities like Gal Gadot, uh, Emma Watson, Scarlett Johansson that uh, were inserted into hardcore pornography. There were cases where defects were used for revenge porn. And now it's not too hard to actually, um, you know, imagine how these kind of technologies could be harmful in a political sphere as well as for corporations. You are watching India Today.